Hi, I'm James Cathrall, founder of Cathrall Audio, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to record the audio from your main stage concerts. So there's two different methods that we'll go through in this video. First one's gonna be pretty straightforward, so let's get right into it. We are here inside of our main stage concert. I'm gonna first open up the preferences by pushing command comma, and then I'm gonna to go to the audio tab. And right here in the middle where it says recording, these are all of your settings for recording your main stage concert. First thing at the top is the output. So by default, it's gonna be at output one, two, and that's probably the one you're gonna to wanna to go with, but it just depends on what your settings are. If you have an audio interface, you just wanna make sure the thing you have selected is where your audio is actually routed to. So you can see right here, I'm using a Scarlett Focusrite 18i20, so I have all of these options, but I'm just gonna stick with output one, two, because that's where my audio is routed. You can see that down here on this channel strip. Next is the folder that it's gonna to record to. By default, it's gonna to go to your main stage folder. I like to create an alternate folder inside of that, just so it's not populating it, but it all keeps it in one area. So you can do that pretty easily by opening up this folder and go to main stage. So this is where it'll go by default. You can go down here and click new folder and then just title it recordings and then you're done. So that's where that's gonna go right now. And then next up is the file format. You have three things to choose from, WAVE, AIFF, and CAF. So these are all pretty similar. They're all lossless formats, so you don't have to worry about that. There's no audio compression happening here like an MP3 would, um, but still a couple things to keep in mind. Um, there are some limitations to these as far as file size. So the AIFF file format maxes out at two gigabytes, the WAV file format maxes out at four gigabytes. And then in theory, the CAF is basically limitless. Um, I think most of the stuff I found, like maybe there might be a limit of like 13 or 14 hours worth of recording size, but that's basically limitless. I mean, cause you're not really gonna record for 14 hours straight. Um, I don't think anyone's really doing that. So you can just keep that in mind. If you wanna do Wave or CAF, I think those might be one of the better ones to go with um, just because of that file size limitation. And then at the bottom of this recording section is the 24 bit recording checkbox. If you uncheck this, then it's gonna record in 16 bit, which nowadays I don't think there's really a reason to record in 16 bit. So it's usually probably better to have this checked at all times. And then final limitation to keep in mind, it's, it's kind of a small thing, but I know especially like in the marching arts, it's pretty common to have multiple players hooked up to one computer and you might have your channel strips set to different outputs. Um, so just keep in mind that you can only record one set of outputs at a time. Um, so if that is something that you're doing and you do actually really wanna record your main stage concert in this type of style, um, you can always send them to a bus and that bus will be output one, two, or you know maybe some separate output. Um, that way you can record both players in the same concert at the same time. That's it for the preferences. Let's close out of that and then let's check out how we can record. So by default, the easiest way is just to go up here at the top of the toolbar and this red button, if you click on that, it's gonna start recording. If you don't see this button, you can right click and then do customize toolbar and then you should see it right here in the toolbar. This is that record button. You can just drag this in and then drop it and then there it goes and hit done. And then that's your record button. So now if I hit record here and then we just play something. And then I hit record again and now it's stopped. I'm gonna open up my finder. Now, if we go to that same recordings folder, you can see it right here. This is our main stage audio recording that we just made. And if I push spacebar. And there's our audio recording that I just made. Now let's look into some alternate ways that you can record, because maybe if you like using perform mode, you won't have access to this record button at the top of the toolbar. So let's see how we do that. I'm gonna go into layout mode, and I'm gonna drag a button up right here. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Uh, and then I'm going to assign it. I click assign right here. I have a button on my MIDI controller. I'm using an M Audio Keystation 61. There's a button right here that looks exactly like the record button. So I'm gonna use that one. So now I have it assigned. I'm gonna go back to edit mode. And then at the concert level, I'm gonna click on this button again, go to actions, and then let's scroll down. And we see it right there, record. 
So now I can click on that. And then if I push this record button on my MIDI controller, now I can see it's recording and it's gonna let me know when it's recording right there. And I push it again and then it stops. So now I can go to perform mode and I'm playing and I have everything set up, I'm ready to go. And then I can just push record right here, play a song, play whatever I want and then push it again and then it finishes recording and then it's gonna send that recording to that same folder that we assigned it to earlier. So that just makes it really quick and easy and super convenient so you can be playing and you can record any part of what you're playing anytime that you want and then it creates that file for you, puts it on your desktop and you can have that to put into maybe into your DAW using it in Logic or anything else, um, especially maybe for like a live performance. If you're performing with a band or any other type of thing and you want to make a recording, then you can do that. And it's going to record everything that goes through those outputs, whether it's an audio channel strip, software instruments, whether you have a whole bunch of different different things layered. When you change patches, it's still gonna record all of that stuff as long as it's all routed to the output that you selected in your audio preferences. All right, now let's take a look at method number two. Um, this one requires outside software. Uh, it's called Audio Hijack. So I'm gonna open that up right now and we'll talk about it a little bit. So here's the Audio Hijack interface right here. It's a really fantastic program for being able to record anything you want on your computer and then create an MP3 file or a WAV file out of it. So Audio Hijack works really well if you're in the marching arts and you do a lot of writing and arranging for different groups uh, and you use Sibelius and Mainstage at the same time in tandem. Um, and if you wanna learn more about how to do that, you can check out the video that we've made on that. I'll put the link to it in the description. That'll teach you how to connect Sibelius and Mainstage so you can have them run at the same time and have them talk to each other. But if you are doing that, you've probably noticed when you export the audio from Sibelius, it won't export anything from Mainstage. It only exports the Sibelius sounds. So if you want both of those in one audio file, then you can use something like Audio Hijack. So if you see right here, I've just set up a pretty simple one uh, with two different application audio blocks. One of them is recording main stage and one of them is recording Sibelius. And then it goes through this. This just shows me if the audio is peaking and then it goes to the recorder. So I have it set up as an MP3 file. Um, you can also make it an uncompressed AIFF file if you want. I like making it MP3s just because typically when I'm doing this, I'm making it to send to somebody else. And so MP3s is just a way easier format to share to other people so they can play it on their phones and things like that. The other thing that's really convenient about it is it takes it and makes one file out of it. So in theory, you could record your Sibelius file and export the audio and then record the main stage concert with that first method that we just talked about and then put those together in like a DAW like logic, but that just adds a bunch of extra steps. Whereas with Audio Hijack, you can just record them at the same time. Other thing that's really convenient about Audio Hijack is you can just let it record for a super long time. Like actually I have it recording right now. You can see here, this is just recording all system audio so that I can use that for this video that I'm making right now. But you can use that um, if you're ever doing something like a, like just a really long um, sort of brainstorming session in main stage and you just have a piano open and you're just kind of fiddling around for a while just to see if any inspiration hits you and you create something interesting. You could just sit there and have this audio hijack recording and it'll capture everything inside of main stage. You don't need to worry about if maybe you accidentally close the program or you do something else, it'll just record all of it in the background. And then when you're done, you can hit stop and now you'll have a file of everything that you've done inside of main stage. Um, so I like this one a lot. It does cost money to get the full version. Um, there's a free version of it, basically like a trial version um, where it will limit you to 10 minute recordings. If you do anything over that, then it adds a bunch of noise um, just so that you, you're only limited to those 10 minutes. Um, but if you wanna do the paid version, I highly suggest it. This is a great piece of software to be able to record all kinds of things off of your Mac computer. All right, that's it for this video. If it was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.